So I'm gonna be carving, you can kind of see with the lighting. I'm gonna be carving this ledge to be a little bit more of a gradual natural flow up towards the sound port. And so I like to things that flow nicely, so I might even do it like that and kind of fade it out underneath the tailpiece area. So you can see there's a good bit of material that I need to bring up and then kind of taper that lip. So what I'm going to do is use the chisel I just sharpened. Be aware of grain direction. Um, it's a little tricky with this recurve because you have the grain going down, bottoming out, rising back up. And then you also have, um, if you're going to be going this way, be aware. It's going to be different than if you come back the other way, you can get tear out. So. Um, that's another, one of the many reasons to have a nice sharp chisel. And then I kind of put little divots in just to kind of make little breadcrumbs for carving. All right. I'll do a few more. You don't have to do this part. I just... I just like to do that. Helps me just visualize everything. It's all about visualization, I guess. All right, and then... Sometimes it's a little bit of a, sometimes it can be a little tricky to figure out what's the best way to hold the instrument down, the best angle to use the chisel, avoid grain run out, and not inadvertently stab yourself with the chisel, so. <laughs> I just kind of do a little bit at a time. Now, when I'm going down, I'm anchoring this hand right here. All right. And then I'm resting the chisel on this finger. And then pushing down with this thumb. And then with this hand, I'm going to help push it forward or towards me. So there's a lot of different vector forces <laughs> kind of going on here. So I'll do that all the way around and then I'll also use um, some scrapers to also kind of dial that in. bit by bit but slowly the goal is to kind of pull that into a nice kind of lip on the edge here um, kind of right up to where the the maple binding is so I'm gonna work on that some more